if you take a conditional statement p implies q p is called the hypothesis or antecedent or premise and q is called the conclusion or consequence what is a proof proof is a valid argument that establishes the truth of a mathematical statement by argument we mean a sequence of statements that ends with a conclusion and by valid we mean that the conclusion or the final statement must follow from the truth of the preceding statements or premises right and if a statement is valid if and only if it is impossible for all the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false to get to the conclusion with the argument we'll have to deduce new statements from the statements we already have we do that using the rules of inference for example if you have statement 1 and statement 2 as premises as the given ones we might deduce a statement 3 using statement 1 and statement 2 and a statement 4 from statement 3 now consider the premises p implies q and p here it is given that p implies q is happened and p is happened which means p is true and p implies q is true now the conclusion is that q has happened right this is a rule of inference from the two statements given we have produced a statement 3 using 1 and 2 with the help of our rule of inference right so p implies q means if p then q and but it is already given that p has happened then q has to be true right that's what this rule of inference is we have to understand that the basis of any rule of inference is a tautology consider this rule p implies q p therefore q so the basis for this rule of inference is a tautology p implies q and p implies q here p implies q and p implies q is a tautology when p implies q and p implies q is a tautology which means that no matter what the values of the proposition p and q are this statement is always true so when p implies q has happened and p has happened it has to be the case that q always will happen here is a list of the rules of inferences used in propositional logic and each rule of inference has a name associated with it. now here is a question that asks us to show that the argument is valid the argument goes like this if today is tuesday i have a test in maths or economics if my economics professor is sick i will not have a test in economics today is tuesday and my economics professor is sick therefore i have a test in maths we have to show that this argument is valid right now we'll represent each sentence using proportional variables so let t denote today is tuesday m denote i have a test in max e denote i have a test in economics s denotes my economic professor is sick here is our translation of the argument into logical notation so first statement t implies m or e which means that today is tuesday implies that i have a test in max or i have a test in economics right and second statement s implies not e which implies that if my economics professor is sick then i do not have a test in economics and third statement t and s which means that today is tuesday and my economics professor is sick and conclusion is m that is i have a test in max observe that we have t and s as premise from the third statement right now if t and s is true then t has to be true and s has to be true so t is true and that is what the fourth statement is and that we applied the rule of simplification right and the fifth statement is s is true because we already know that t is true and s is true so s has to be true that is again from 3 using the rule of simplification sixth statement will be m or e why because from the first statement we know that t implies m or e right if t is true then m or e happens and the fourth statement says that t has happened right t is true so m or e should happen that's why sixth statement is m or e which is the rule of modus ponens right and the seventh statement is 
not e. Why? We know that from second statement, s implies not e is true because it's a premise. And fifth statement, s is true. So not e has to be true. Rule of mod exponents, right? And now using the sixth statement and seventh statement, using the rule of disjunctive syllogism, we get the conclusion m. It is very important to distinguish between correct reasoning and incorrect reasoning. Now, let P has happened and P implies Q has also happened, which means we can conclude that Q has happened. We say that it's a correct reasoning because P and P implies Q implies Q is a tautology. Now, let P implies Q has happened and Q has also happened. So, we, can, we are concluding that P has happened. This is an incorrect reasoning because P implies Q and Q implies P is not a tautology. P implies Q and Q implies P is not a tautology because it is false when P is false and Q is true. Now, let's see some rules of inference used for the quantified statements. Now, suppose that for all x, P of x is true which means for all the values of x in the domain p of x is true. Now if you take any arbitrary c from the domain of x p of c is going to be true. So that means from for all x p of x we can conclude p of c is true for any arbitrary c. That is the rule universal instantiation. Now if p of c is true for an arbitrary c no matter any arbitrary element you take p of that element is going to be true right so for every element in that domain p of x is going to be true so for all x p of x is true this is a rule of universal generalization if there x is x p of x is true which means that there is at least one value for x in the domain for which p of x is true right and with, from that we can conclude that p of c is true for some element c there exists at least one element C for which P of C is true, right? That's what is called as existential instantiation. And the next rule, suppose P of C is true for some element C. Then we can conclude that there exists X P of X because we have an element C for which P of C is true. This is called as existential generalization. Let's see another example where again we want to show the argument is valid. Right. The argument goes like this. Everyone in this discrete mathematics class has taken a course in computer science. And Marla is a student in this class. Therefore, Marla has taken a course in computer science. Now, let D of X represents the statement X is in this discrete mathematics class. And C of X represents the statement X has taken a course in computer science. Then the premises are for all X, D of X implies C of X and D of Merla because Merla is a student in the discrete mathematics class right now the conclusion is that uh, Merla has taken a course in computer science that we represent using C of Merla right we have to prove that this is a valid argument that if the premises are all true then the conclusion is true right now let's see as a first step we take the premise for all x D of x implies C of x and from this premise, using the rule of universal instantiation, we get that D of Merla implies C of Merla, right? And D of Merla is a premise. That is the third statement. And from the second and third statement, we get that C of Merla, right? Because of the rule of mod exponents, right? And hence, we conclude that C of Merla has happened. And hence, the argument is valid. Now, the arguments that we have seen to show that the statements involving propositions and quantified statements are true were formal proofs where all the steps were supplied and the rules for each step in the argument were given, right? However, formal proofs of useful theorems can be extremely long and hard to follow. In practice, the proofs of theorems designed for human consumption are almost always informal proofs where more than one rule of inference may be used in each step were steps may be skipped, were the axioms being used and the rules of inference used are not explicitly stated. Basically, informal proofs can often explain to humans why theorems are true. While computers are perfectly happy 
producing formal proofs using automated reasoning systems. So we will be jumping from formal proofs to informal proofs and we are going to look at methods of proving theorems in detail in our next lecture. Thank you.